Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this impressive 3D lens effect. So let's get going. OK, so I'm going with my usual project settings, 1920 1080, 24 frames a second duration of 10 seconds saves having to think about anything. So let's come over and import our 3D asset, which I made in Blender. So it's this thing here called Gizmo, and it looks like this. And of course, you'll find a link to that in the description. So first of all, come over to the three object controls, select custom and set this unit size to 400. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a replicator out of this. So we'll come to Object and Replicate. We're going to choose Circle, obviously, for the shape. Arrangement is going to be Outline. Radius is going to be 500. I'll come back to the points in a second. So it's automatically set to 3D, which is good because it's got a 3D source object. We need to turn on Align Angle. And then we need to open up the angle controls, the 3D angle controls that we've got because it's a 3D replicator. And I'm going to set the Y value to 90 and the Z value to 45. So now we can up the number of points and go for 100. And I'm just going to grab a camera, switch to 3D, just so I can show you around the shape. And it looks like this. Pretty cool out of just that very simple source object. But the trick of this is going to be what we do here inside of Motion to make this look nice. So let's first of all just set up the camera. So we've got a basic animation. I'm going to set that Y position to negative 100 and the Z position I'm going to set to positive 100. And let's just come into the rotation and set this up. I want to set an X rotation of 15, 0, that Y. So then let's add an oscillate to the X. Let's set the amplitude to 10. That speed is good. Let's come back over to properties. Let's add an oscillate to the Y. And for the Y, let's change the amplitude to 30 and set the speed to 10. And now we've got this simple animation like this. So as I say, the, the trick here is going to be what we do with our compositing. So let's call this group here Lens. I'm also just going to drop in a background while I'm at it. So generators, color solid, drop that in at the back, set this group to 2D, set the color to black. So let's call this group background BG. So into this lens group, I'm going to add a circle. Now select the circle tool, holding down the shift and option keys. I'm going to drag out a circle like that. And let's just make sure it's in the center resetting it. Notice that because of the camera's position, we've got all sorts of funky rotations and so on. Just remember to reset all of that. Let's come back over to the shape. Let's come over first of all to geometry and set that radius to 180. Come back over to style and let's set the feather to 100. Let's actually set the opacity down to 75%. And then all we need to do is need to come over to the position and set that Z position to negative 135. And that's going to, as you see, position it just at the back there so we get that nice sense of depth. So what I also want is a kind of front face to the lens. And I'm going to duplicate this existing circle. Right click, duplicate. Let's call this front. And let's come over to the geometry. So for the radius, we're going to go with 450 for this. Let's come back over to the style. Let's set the feather to 150. Let's set the fill opacity to 30%. And then we need to come over to properties and we need to line it up with the front. So instead of that negative 135, we're going to go with positive 420. And hopefully you can see that that's now sort of sitting in front like that. And if we play, I think that's helping quite a bit. Let's maybe set its blend mode to add. I don't know. Yes, that's good because then we've brightened up that inner core in the process. So I'm also going to add a sort of inner ring to this back lens here. So let's select this circle here and duplicate it. So right click duplicate. 
let's call this a ring or something like that. Okay, for, so for this one, let's come over to the geometry and set its radius. Let's go for 265 for this. Let's come over to the style. So we don't want a fill in this case, we want an outline. So turn on the outline, set the outline width to 10. And so our Z position of this is good. So what we're gonna do with this is we are going to add a stroke to it. So filters, border and stroke. So we don't want red. What we want is mid gray. So let's switch to the grayscale slider and just select mid gray like that. Let's set the width to 35 and I'm going to turn on hide source and you can see that now the actual source object is has disappeared, which is good. And then I'm going to set this fade inside and outside, both of these to 40 percent. And you can see we're just adding a bit of extra sort of modeling detail in the background there. And I think that helps. So then I want to come back to my background group and I want to drop in a lens flare. So generators, lens flare. Let's have a size of 1000 and let's crank the intensity up to four. And what I really want to do with this is use it for the streaks that we're getting on the outside. So let's just increase the streak intensity like that. We're probably going to sort out that center. I don't entirely like what we're seeing there. Maybe increase that streak count though. That looks looking better. There we go. Let's increase that up to about 75. Okay, so what we could probably do with that center is just mask it off. So let's come down and grab a circle mask and let's drag out a mask like that, holding down the shift and option key. Obviously we need to invert it and we need to center it up. Always center everything up and we need to give it a bit of feather. So let's just feather that out like this. I think that's going to be better just clearing that central lens and maybe just reduce the opacity of it. So we get just a little bit. So down to about sort of 80%. You can see those streaks there, but they're not too prominent. So I think I like the look of that. Now what we could do with that lens flare is actually make it 3D. So let's actually try that. So let's actually drag it out of that background group into a new group here. And you can see now it's responding to the camera, but obviously because of that, it is now far too small. So we need to just increase its width and height. So let's just go crazy, 5,000 by 5,000. And now despite the movement of the camera, that is moving around like that. That's probably pretty good. So that's our lens flare. So that's kind of good, but really what's gonna make this is if we add some color and some glow. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this lens group is add a filter that you probably don't use very often. It's blur and prism. And you can see it's given us right off the bat this really nice prismatic coloration that's adding to that sort of sense of refraction. I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit, go down to about five, and I think that's probably plenty. So you can see the difference that makes really quite a lot. So another thing I want to do before we start talking about glow is to add a light, so object light. Now, what I want to do is I want to exclude things from this light. So I want to exclude this lens flare group. So I don't want that lit. So let's come down to the lighting for that, turn it off. So I really only want the 3D element to be affected. So I'm also going to select this circle, turn that off. This ring, turn that off. Uh, this front ring, turn that off as well. So then let's just finesse this light. Let's set its Z position to a thousand pixels. Let's come over and adjust its intensity up to 250. And so now we've got this pretty nice effect. It really feels as though this is, this is kind of a lens that's focusing a, a bright light. So what's gonna really make it though is what we do with the glow. Now in my version, I leveraged the awesome power of Hawaii Super Glow and we got this really, really nice coloration from that this wonderful kind of photorealistic fogging and real kind of intensity. But obviously a lot of you are not gonna have this, so I'm not going to bother to show you how that all works. Let's see what we can do with the actual motion tools. It's not gonna to be as good, but let's do our best. So let's come back over to this lens group here. I think probably the first thing I want to do is just try and squeeze some more color into it. So let's add a hue saturation 
and let's just increase the saturation probably all the way I think up to three then I think let's try some color curves so color curves just slapping that on at the defaults actually helps a great deal so I think I like that maybe just dial back that prism a little bit like that and then I guess we have to talk about glow and this is where it gets difficult so obviously adding the basic old-fashioned glow just looks terrible really I think I just don't think that's a viable solution you know if you increase the radius it'll go soft I don't think we're going to go there let's just delete that and let's try the neon filter and obviously that's way too much so let's just turn the mix value down to about 20 percent and let's just increase the outer glow as much as we can how far does it go let's maybe go for 400 maybe turn down that mix value a bit to 10 think this might be as good as we're going to get with with the glow we might want to adjust these color curves for some extra interest let's maybe add in a bit more blue probably helps I think like that doesn't it I think I'll leave it at that we're never going to get that gorgeous Hawaii super glow look but I think that's pretty good. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. As you see, taking that very simple initial 3D shape, using the replicator, and then using some motion compositing magic, we've created something pretty impressive, I think. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.